Hey Credit Warriors, Credit Shifu here, and this is a fun kind of video. We are gonna look through all my accounts, or most of my accounts, credit cards, frequent flyer programs, etc. And I'm gonna reveal how many points Credit Shifu has, okay? Now, uh, just bear in mind, we did do a massive redemption of points uh, back in the fall, in, in I think it was in October, uh, going to Grand Cayman, okay, in the Cayman Islands, staying at the Ritz Carlton. Uh, well, I think we redeemed 180,000 Marriott points, and also 100,000 uh, American Express points for the flights and hotels over there for four people. Um, so just you know, keep that in mind because some of our balances are a little bit low because they've been cleaned out because of that trip. Um, I'm also not gonna include every single account because I have a few that I just never check, like Club Carlson, it's probably got like 1,000 points in there, uh, Ever Air, which uh, I have an account with and I was actually silver status with them. I accumulated about 50,000 points, but I just never use them and I think my points are actually um, you know, expiring with them now. So I don't even really look at that. So I've kind of resigned to you know, letting that go. Anyway, um, so we're just gonna go through the points, uh, the accounts that I actually use and we're gonna start, we're gonna go from low to high, okay? So first up is Chase, good old Chase UR points. Now this actually would be normally one of my higher balances ones, but I've actually transferred a lot of my points uh, over to British Airways. So as you can see, right now I just have 3,692 points. I do actually have some additional points on the Chase Freedom, about 600, so if I transfer those over, it'll bring the balance to just over 4,000. Um, and yeah, you know, I have transferred a lot of them over to British Airways. You'll see my balance on British Airways uh, in just a few moments. Um, so you'll see sort of how many points I have uh, transferred over and stuff. Uh, and you can also see on here my travel credit. I've used uh, just under half of it. Um, mine resets every calendar year because I was one of the people who got the card right at the start when it was still every calendar year. I believe it's now changed to card membership year so you don't get it twice in the first year. Funny story, I actually, you know, at the end of last year, uh, I thought it had reset already because my card membership year was up and I started using the card on a lot of, you know, trains and stuff and Ubers and then I realized, oh, it's not, you know, free uh, because it's every calendar year. Obviously not really free anyway, it's just like prepaid because you pay, pay for it uh, in the card annual fee. All right, so Chase is my lowest status at the moment. Let's move on to the next one. Now we have Marriott Bonvoy, okay? So this is obviously the new name for the merged loyalty program with Marriott, Ritz-Carlton, and SPG. It's not called Marriott Rewards anymore, it's called Marriott Bonvoy. Uh, if you're wondering, if you have SPG points, the, the points are worth um, one third of an SPG point. So if you had an SPG account, they transfer over at a one to three ratio. Uh, and currently in Marriott Bonvoy, I have 5,889 points. Uh, a lot of those points I earned by staying at the Ritz-Carlton and you know the spending I did there because my account basically went to zero um, because I booked a stay at the Ritz-Carlton in the Cayman Islands, which is an incredible hotel. Um, I think it was 60,000 points uh, per night. So we did three nights for 180,000 points. Two of those nights came from my wife's account, Mrs. Credit Schiffer's account, and uh, one of those nights came from my account. So I completely cleaned out my account. So as for earning Marriott points at the moment for this year, not planning on staying in any additional Marriott properties. So we probably won't be earning any Marriott points for a while, um, but maybe coming into next year, we'll start thinking of some strategies, how to earn some more Marriott points so that we can do some more stays at Ritz-Carlton, St. Regis, all those wonderful luxury hotels that are owned by uh, Marriott Bonvoy. Next up, we have Hilton, good old Hilton. Okay, so we're starting to get a little bit higher now in terms of balances. This is my Hilton back end here. You can see I'm a gold member and I have 20,376 points, okay? Now Hilton, I you know have been sort of taking a rest. I've been taking a rest from earning a lot of these because I've been mainly putting most of my spending on my Amex Gold Card um, because I just wanted to earn a huge amount of Amex points. Um, so Hilton currently at 20,000 points and that would be good for a stay in the sort of grimiest uh, Hampton Inn somewhere out in the countryside, all right? The lowest of the low. Um, but I'm definitely not gonna use it for that. So we are thinking of doing a trip this year over to LA. Uh, it's really nice to go to LA in the winter, especially if you live in New York, or maybe not the winter, but just like coming into spring where it's still a bit cold here, but over there it's already like feeling like summer. Um, and yeah, we wanna stay at the Waldorf Astoria in Beverly Hills, which is a Hilton hotel. It's 95,000 points a night. Um, so obviously this 20,000 isn't gonna cover that, but Mrs. Credit Shifu recently upgraded her Hilton Honors card to the Hilton Honors Ascend card with a 150,000 point 
upgrade offer. So once we've got that 150,000, then add on the spending from that and also the, uh, you know, this 20,000 points, we should have enough for two nights. Maybe we'll pay for a third night uh, with cash uh, and get a three night stay at the Waldorf Astoria, which should be amazing. I've heard it's a really nice hotel. Um, it's right next to the Beverly Hilton, which we stayed at before. I don't really want to stay there again, even though that is a nice hotel, but I like to get some variety. And obviously everywhere I stay, every luxury hotel I stay in, I always make a video about it. So I don't want to, you know, I can't make a Beverly Hilton video again. So it's got to be, it's got to be a new luxury hotel, okay? So that's what we're hoping to do. And uh, the flight we're going to take over there, that's got some relation to the next account that I'm going to talk about. So we'll talk about that next, all right? Next up is British Airways. So British Airways is my main, um, you know, frequent flyer program because obviously they work with American Airlines and I use them for flying home to the UK uh, once or twice a year. You can see the household account balance. I'm going to use household balance here is a uh, 52,000, um, just over 52,000. Obviously, my individual account balance is about 12,000, but they let you pull your points, so it's really the household balance that matters. 52,000. Uh, you can see I'm a bronze member as well, which I get a few benefits like. Um, uh, business class check-in, I got priority boarding. I think on American Airlines you board in Group 4 if you're British Airways Bronze, which is, you know, it sounds not that close to the front, but actually it is because I think there's eight or nine groups in total. And some of the groups at the beginning are like, you know, active duty military, which aren't always on the plane, so they aren't necessarily people that fit into the um, but you know, forward groups anyway. So Group 4 is reasonably early. British Airways you also get early boarding and stuff as well. Also. With me personally, because we're always traveling with kids, uh, normally we get to board early regardless um, of whatever status we are. Uh, business class check-in though is definitely uh, helpful. Now what are we saving these points for? So these points, I probably want to save them for doing a business class flight over to the UK. Um, 50,000 is enough for a one-way business class ticket, um, but we have more points from elsewhere that we are gonna transfer over, so we can boost this balance a lot, okay? Now, what I'm thinking of doing, there's a business class only flight, which goes from JFK to London City Airport, okay? LCY is the, you know, the three letters. Um, and it's quite unique in that it's an airport right or not quite in central London, but very close to the center of the city. It's in the financial district. And uh, there is a small plane with the number BA001, which was actually the flight number that Concorde had when it was flying, okay? So it's kind of special. It's a very small plane. It seats like 30 people, and it's all business class, okay? So very, very cool. I'm thinking of doing that flight. Um, there's also a lot of award availability on that flight as well. A lot of the time, you can't find more than one seat in business class in other flights, but that one normally has like two or three even. So um, it has great award availability. Other alternative is if we want to avoid the big you know, fuel surcharges and stuff, would be to go for Aer Lingus and change planes in Ireland and that is a common trick when traveling to the UK uh, now I did mention I am British Airways bronze I do want to up that to silver so when we go over to LA this year uh, we'll be flying American Airlines and we have several hundred dollars worth of gift cards saved up from the uh, Amex uh, you know, airline fee credit that we use for gift cards uh, on the platinum and gold card from last year this year it doesn't seem that they're redeeming for gift cards recently the news broke that they're actually not you know, honoring that. They're not giving you statement credits for gift cards anymore with American, which is a real shame. Um, but, you know, we'll just use those um, airline fee credits for actually what they're supposed to be used for. So we'll probably book the tickets and then we'll, you know, get like main cabin extra by paying extra on the card or, or we'll, you know, do baggage fees or whatever like that. Um, and to get you know, up to British Airways Silver. Obviously, this flight will count. Um, even though we're using gift cards for it, it'll still be classed as a paid flight. Um, so that'll help with the British Airways Silver status. And then also the business class flight to Europe, um, that'll help as well. And hopefully, we'll be able to make British Airways Silver uh, by this summer. Uh, and then we'll be able to go in One World lounges, and we'll be able to do a load more lounge reviews uh, on this channel, which will be awesome. OK, let's move on to the last one now. And it is American Express, which we have 94,236 points. So that's by far my biggest balance uh, of any of them. A lot of these came uh, through doing referrals, and we also got the 25,000 point sign up bonus on the Amex Gold Card last year. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard my story about how I missed out on the 50,000. Uh, just such an idiot. I was just too excited to get it. I just logged on and 
and applied for it the first day it was available. I should have waited and looked at, you know, for a referral link from someone and got the 50,000. But, uh, you know, I made up for it by doing a load of referrals myself and earning 55,000 points that way. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, so yes, this is from American Express, over 90,000 points. These could all be transferred to British Airways at a one-to-one -one ratio. Unfortunately, um, there's no special promotion. Last fall, there was a 1.4 British Airways points, so a one to 1.4. Uh, promotion, so that would mean that these 90,000 would be worth over 130,000 uh, points, probably, um, which you know would be amazing. But obviously, we don't have that at the moment. We may just end up transferring all of them to British Airways, which would leave us with you know around 150,000 British Airways avios, which we could then use to get you know business class flights over to the UK and back. Um, so yeah, that might be the strategy that we do, or something else. Um, but we're going to leave them in American Express first until we know what we're going to do with them. Uh, don't transfer your points out before you know uh, what, how you're going to spend them, okay? That's kind of like a golden rule of a credit card points and miles game, guys, okay? So that's, you know, my current, most of my accounts at the moment, uh, at least the ones with high balances in them. Um, and like I said, we did clean it out at the end of last year with our trip to the Cayman Islands, spent a huge amount of points on that. Um, obviously, Mrs. Credit Shifu also has a lot of points. She had a lot, has a lot of points with Hyatt. Um, she's getting 150,000 Hilton points. So maybe once she gets that, um, we'll do this same video for her and we'll go through her accounts and we'll show you how much points she has and what they could be used for. Guys, um, if you like this kind of thing, we'll put our favorite travel credit cards and also our favorite hotel credit cards in the description below. You guys can check out what deals, sign up bonuses, all that kind of stuff is available. Obviously, these are affiliate links. It helps out our show. Um, but uh, if you want to see the advertiser disclosure, you can click the description section and it's in the bottom of the description section below. Thanks for watching guys. Please subscribe if you're new. We'll see you next time. Oh, also leave a comment with how many points you have. I'd love to hear it. Bye-bye.